Welcome back. This lesson introduces a new concept in our component design. We've already seen what the display controller does. While we could throw every other task into that controller, over time I've found it better to separate tasks that pertain to particular views or function into their own subcontrollers. This is not particularly hard and Joomla's J controller class already knows how to access subcontrollers using the dot notation in the task request variable. We saw that when we set up the toolbar for the list view. The subcontrollers work the same way as the display controller, but we group them in a folder called controllers placed under the root component folder. We'll just create that and then we'll create a new file called messages.php because this is a subcontroller that will be used to process tasks on selected records from the messages view. Remember to grab an index.html file and copy it into the new folder. We've already added the normal doc block, so go down and find the snippet called backend list subcontroller and bring up the input form. Fill in the package and the subpackage for the class, and then the name of the component, hello, in proper case, and the name of the view it relates to, messages, in proper case. Next, we add the model that the controller will be using, and this will be the message model. Note the singular form this time. We use the message model because that is the model that has all the support for changing state, saving, ordering and so on. We'll actually create that model in the next module of lessons that deal with the backend edit form. Insert that snippet and you should have a wow is that all moment. Well, yes it is and that's because we're extending a class called jcontrollerAdmin which does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. You can see we've used the jimport function to load the jcontrolleradmin class from the Joomla framework. And like our other classes, this subcontroller has a very special name format. It's the name of the component, hello, followed by the word controller, followed by the name of the subcontroller, messages. The only method we need to override is a method called getModel in the jcontrolleradmin class to specifically load the model that jcontrolleradmin is expecting. I just need to update the shot to reflect changes in the snippet. There we go. You can see we are passing the name of the model, message, in the argument list and also the class prefix for our components. And that we are just passing those values to the parent. But notice the third argument. This is the configuration array that is passed to the model and we're passing it a specific configuration option called ignore underscore request. Remember when we were looking at the populate state method in the model? Well, that's because we assume that, more often than not, models will get some data from the request. However, when using this subcontroller, we don't want the model to look at the request. We want the subcontroller to have complete control over any of the model state. To do that, we pass the configuration option ignore underscore request with a value of true. That's really the only tricky bit in the whole class. Keep this in the back of your mind when you are working with models and they seem to be behaving strangely. It could be because you forgot to ignore input from the request. That just about wraps up our list view. The next lesson looks at some final touches to lock down the security of those ordering columns which can present a minor security hazard. See you back soon.